obviously there is two parts to your body transformation, right? There's the actual change part, and then there is the maintaining part, actually keeping the results that you have worked so hard for. In this video, I'm going to talk about maintaining your progress if you have been skinny fat and you are at a stage where that is what you want to do. You want to maintain your new body. Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jodi and I help you change your beliefs so you can change your body, your health and your life. This video is for you if you are skinny fat and you have gone through the body recomposition process or even if you're skinny fat and you're wondering in advance, how do I actually keep the results that I'm going to achieve? And it is something to consider at the very start because in reality, in order to keep your results, you actually have to become that person who has those results and this is what I always go back to in terms of whatever you do has to be sustainable in some regard like no you don't have to track your food forever and no you don't have to work out to say four or five days a week forever but you do have to keep up some of those habits that you have integrated into your life for the rest of your life in order to keep those results. So it really is about becoming that fit person, that person that has the body you desire. It's not just a matter of doing X, Y, Z, getting the result and then thinking you're gonna be able to keep it because it doesn't work like that. And that is really why quick fixes ultimately don't work and even surgeries to some extent. And you know, there's lots of talk at the moment about these new weight loss drugs, which really are not going to work long term because they are that quick fix. They're not forcing you to learn how to integrate the habits that you need to integrate in order to have that body that you desire. So as much as the process being slow is annoying and frustrating and we all want it to be faster, it's actually a good thing in so many ways because it does give you time to learn the lessons and it does give you time to really make those habits part of who you are so they just come naturally and every time you are getting frustrated by how long it's taking i encourage you to take on that perspective and to actually be grateful for the fact it's taking time because it is ultimately allowing you to achieve results that are sustainable that you can keep forever it's like you have to ask yourself when you are feeling frustrated do i want quick results that aren't going to last or do I want results that I can actually keep? And this is why it's also important to kind of jump in almost and to learn how to do all this stuff even when life isn't perfect. You have to be able to adapt the actions you need to take to moments in your life when it is really busy or when you are traveling or when you're not feeling your best. You can't just rely on motivation. You can't just rely on feeling good. You can't just keep this stuff up when you are feeling like it. You are going to get nowhere. So forcing yourself to adapt to situations when life does happen. And when I say adapt, I mean still doing what you need to do in some capacity. It doesn't have to be the full capacity. Maybe you have a crazy week where you just don't have any time to get your workouts in. That is fine, but what else can you control? What else can you do? Remember, there's so much more to this than just your workouts, right? Like there are various elements that you have to work on to get where you wanna go. Anyway, so just say you have reached a point where you are happy with your results, you don't really wanna build more muscle, you don't really wanna lose more body fat, you don't really desire getting stronger or changing at all, this is where you can just aim for maintenance. And that is a great thing to aim for in itself, even throughout the process, actually, like having breaks from calorie deficits or surpluses or aiming to change your body and just having a maintenance phase, that is fine as well. But do it with intention. Don't do it in a way where it's like, oh, I'm just going to have a break. I'm just going to do nothing. I'm just going to eat whatever I want because you're going to stuff yourself up and you probably aren't going to maintain your results if you're not intentional about it to begin with. So you have to really consider four things, in my opinion. The first thing is obviously going to be your calorie intake. And then the next thing related to that is going to be your protein intake, because 
obviously now with this new muscle on you, with this lower body fat percentage, you still need to keep up that protein intake to maintain your muscle mass and for your health. So you want to be very aware of your protein intake throughout the day. Now, this doesn't mean you necessarily have to track calories, but what I would do, and I think I have an article about this on my website about transitioning from macro tracking to intuitive eating, but that's basically what you want to aim for, right? I would start to ease off the tracking and you can do this in various ways, but you want to make sure you are being mindful of that protein again and you're still being mindful of your hunger signals and how eating food makes you feel in terms of hunger because you kind of know if you're at maintenance you kind of like you're not going to be going to bed hungry like you'll experience some hunger throughout the day most likely and that can change day by day depending on your activity but while you're still tracking actually paying attention to that can be really helpful and actually paying attention to like your meals and what they're composed of like i know when i had my eating disorder and I was doing it obviously in a negative way, but I wasn't tracking calories. I just had pictures in my head of what my food intake had to look like in order to keep my weight down. And so I would be like, okay, breakfast has to be composed of my yogurt and this and that. And then if I don't have my yogurt, then I've got to swap it for something else that is also high in protein, low in fat. So you can kind of do something similar, but obviously with a healthier mindset. Now, it can be really scary to stop tracking macros when you're being used to tracking forever. And so that's where you might want to go down to tracking for just like one day a week, just to kind of get an idea that you are still eating around your maintenance levels. And then once you feel comfortable, once you've done that enough and you see that, okay, I really am hitting my maintenance, I can just stop tracking now. Maybe you start tracking like once a year for a week, just to kind of get an idea again and to see where you're at. And maybe you get to a point where you want to go back into tracking because you want to change your body again. And you can do that as well. But yeah, like tracking is a tool. Once you've used it, you can bring it back throughout your life when you need to. Now, the other element of this, of course, is your activities. So your workouts, weight training, and then obviously your steps, because if you are working towards changing your body, you should be paying attention to a step target of some sort. And at the end of the day, if you want to stay healthy, you should keep those steps up. Like 8K minimum a day, I would say. 8 to 10K a day is a really good target. And keep being active overall. And then when it comes to maintaining your progress in terms of muscle mass, training becomes a lot easier in that regard. So you can go down to a maintenance phase in terms of training where you literally are working out two days a week. But I don't recommend that if you still want to change your body. If you still want to change your body, you need about three days a week, depending on where you're at. If you're a bit more advanced, then four days a week is going to be more realistic for you. And in some cases, you might even need five days a week. But it really depends on where you're at. And you always want to use the minimum effective dose, they call it, right? So you want to aim to lose fat on as many calories as possible and you want to aim to build muscle on as fewer workouts as possible or what is actually realistic to fit into your week so you can like really push yourself and make sure you are recovering well from your training and that is really going to depend on you and so many factors but in general for maintenance you can get away with working out two days a week. I would make sure those workouts are full body days to make sure you're still covering all the muscle groups and you still wanna aim to be as strong as you were, like keep that strength, but you're not necessarily going to be able to increase strength. Now, I actually find maintaining really boring and I struggle then with motivation to go to gym and get those workouts in because if I'm not seeing progress in my training and if I'm not seeing changes in my body even if some of those changes are like gaining muscle being in a surplus gaining a little bit of body fat like that is so much more exciting to me than going to the gym just going through the motions and not really seeing any progress from it so for me I probably will not maintain for a very long time. But in saying that, I will go through phases where I do just aim for maintenance. And for example, I am going away in May and I definitely don't wanna go backwards because 
I have started making progress again since switching coaches and that's the hard thing about switching coaches, right? Like obviously I had to because I was not happy with the service I was getting, but it would have been much better to stay with that coach because a coach starts to learn so much about you. They start to learn about like your individual body and how you recover from training and what works for you. And so by changing coaches, you're effectively starting that process again. So you kind of feel like you go back a little bit and then now I'm at a stage where I'm starting to move forward. I don't want to take a break when I go away. So I will aim to maintain as long as I don't go backwards. Like it's going to be too stressful to try and uh, make progress and improve during the time I'm away. So I will take probably a full week off from training. And then in the other weeks, I intend to get my workouts in still but in more of a maintenance capacity. And then that way it might be a little bit hard when I'm away, but when I get back, and this is what I'm always thinking about, like that future, right? That future me, I'm going to be so proud of myself and so happy that I did keep things up in some capacity while I'm away, because then when I'm back, I'm gonna be able to just continue moving forward without starting from being a bit backwards again. And that is fine if that happens for you in some stages, like I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but just because I've already done that and been through that this year, I don't want it to happen again so soon. That is all for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or send an email. If you liked it, please like it. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And if that's the case, I will see you in the next video.